Sometimes there really are miracles, not heaven sent ones, but human achievements no one thought could happen. But they did. There it sat, 26 acres of scrubby, weedy, neglected land someone once called a biological junkyard. But it wasn't. Though scarred and parched, that land held secrets and a history beneath the soil. To the Native American Tongva people who lived here for centuries, it was known as Guasna, or the place of mud. By 1978, there were only hints of what it once was, ankle-deep mud in the rainy season and random foraging birds who stubbornly refused to give up the land for dead. When the landowner, eccentric billionaire Howard Hughes, died, his heirs, known as Summa Corporation, immediately sought to build an enormous high-rise development near Lincoln and Jefferson Boulevards in Los Angeles. They hired biologists willing to claim, no, no wetland here. That is, until Dr. Howard Towner of Loyola Marymount University and my husband, Bill Lansford, took soil samples proving it was indeed wetland soil. When those same biologists came to the site, they were compelled to admit that they were wrong as they stood sinking knee-deep in Guashna. Friends of Biona Wetlands had been battling to save the wetlands since 1978. That it's one of the most important environmental assets we can possibly But in have. 1990, all that changed when a new enlightened landowner, McGuire Thomas Partners, and a determined Friends of Biona Wetlands, under the wise guidance of Council Member Ruth Galanter, took a different road, one less traveled by. And, as the poet says, that has made all the difference. Nelson Rising led the developers team, while I, Ruth Lansford, led the Friends. But true to most controversies, first came the lawyers. The Friends were represented by the Center for Law and the Public Interest, led by Carlisle Hall, who quizzed me in a pretty intense cross-examination before taking us on pro bono. He assigned Joe Poe as our lead attorney. Joe's first victory kept our case active when it was about to be thrown out of court. From then on, she proved to be the best attorney anyone could wish for. She kept me, the amateur, on track. Dave Venna represented Playa Vista and was unfailingly honest, straightforward, and willing to listen. The friends Playa Vista, our attorneys and consultants, met many times. We agreed that this would be the perfect place to create for the first time a flood controlling, water quality enhancing natural habitat with public recreation all in one system. The Bayona Freshwater Marsh. It would have to meet stringent conditions. Playa Vista would pay for and maintain in perpetuity an environment superior to what existed. And in the future, if the freshwater marsh proved incompatible with the planned salt marsh restoration, it would have to be redesigned at Playa Vista's expense. We all agreed. Then came the hard part. How? Beginning with Jacob Lipa, president of Somos, a top engineering firm who would become the project manager, and Sharon Lockhart, environmental consultant at Playa Vista, preliminary design sketches blossomed into an innovative plan. Eric Strecker of Geosyntec, an expert in stormwater management, joined the group with new ideas as the concept advanced. The Eric the brought in Robert Gerhardt, Humboldt State University's professor in environmental resources engineering. Ecologist John Rieger also came on board. Both were recognized experts in wetland creation and restoration. Then there was Edith Reed. We know her fondly as the Marsh Mistress. She played a significant role in the planning phase, providing technical support regarding botanical resources and wetland ecology. Now, Edith manages the marsh. She is the heart of the freshwater marsh. For all of them, this was not just work. This was a creative challenge. Attempting something never done before brought excitement, camaraderie, and brilliant new ideas. Doug Gardner took over for Playa Vista managing the project master plan and overseeing the entitlement process. Facing the often conflicting requirements of federal, state, and local jurisdictions, as well as the clear expectations from the Friends and Ruth Galanter, his biggest challenge was to reconcile all these interests in a plan that still made economic sense. Once the design was complete, Paul Hayden of C2 Collaborative became the landscape architect. 
He served as the bridge between the engineering design and habitat and biology requirements, also assuring that flood control and water quality criteria were met. Joel Stenz, VVP of Construction, was the lead contact for technical aspects. He had the pleasure of signing the wetland restoration permit when it was finally approved. In 2003, we all celebrated by planting a ceremonial sycamore tree. I don't know. <laughs> I like seeing the boss work. See, Ruth, the woman's work is never done. <laughs> what a surprise! <laughs> This is going to be a beautiful island, thick with vegetation, and a great uh, home for a lot of native birds and animals to use the willows as habitat. The freshwater marsh may not look like much yet. It's, it's getting there already. But like a newborn baby, it, it is already beautiful to its parents. And this infant marsh has many loving parents. From the team of and so began the marsh's evolution to what we see today. It's all quite beautiful, especially in the springtime during migratory season when flocks and flocks of birds stop by. But the freshwater marsh is so much more than a pretty place. It fulfills the pledge we all made at the very beginning. And it's become home for 250 native species, some of which haven't been seen here in more than 100 years. Talented people working together with good science, integrity, imagination, and goodwill can indeed make miracles on earth. <laughs>